Welcome to Sad Boys, a podcast about feelings and other things. Also, I'm Jarvis. Jordan. And, <laughs> and today we're joined by Emma. And I know I'm going to say this wrong. And I know I, how I learned once how to say it. Whoa. Mm-hmm. But I don't. Okay. Okay. You didn't do your research before you came No, on? I was hoping that my memory would help me. Is it Langevin or Langevin? Neither. Neither. Fuck. Kill me. Ooh, who wants to shoot him first? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All right. How do you say it? Longevin. Fuck. Technically. It's like Longinus. I knew, uh, like the Lance of Longinus. Shout out to my Ava heads out there. I, I had a mnemonic in my head and I just forgot it. I don't think I technically say it right either because like the French Canadians are always like, that's not how you say it. But then they don't tell me how it's supposed to be pronounced. Mm, you don't but they gatekeep it. That's how my family says it. So I don't know. They're top of the list of people to ignore Longevin. globally. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very, who cares about French Canadians? Yeah. 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 Jordan Pick famously, a lane. Yeah. Jordan famously hates the French. Hey, on this well, podcast. I mean, love that, the Canadians. That's fair. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. But I think that it's, it's arrogant of the French to try and take over Canada like that. Unless they were there first. <laughs> I don't know. Emma, I would describe you as a content demon. That's fair. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. how would you describe yourself? I'm like the opposite of a comfort creator. <laughs> <laughs> discomfort creator? Yeah, discomfort creator. You're like a bed of needles. That yeah, and even creator is a loose term because that you, require, that you have to post to be hey, a creator. You'd think so. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan's been getting I got away. By. Yeah, I was going to say, Jordan's been getting away with a lot. I'm yeah. a devilish. I'm something, I'm the devil of podcasts. You know what I mean? I'm the, the devilish little don't do nothing. Call yourself a creator. That's thing. me too. Um, but you, you're currently a New Yorker. Yes. And uh-huh. you are from that part of the States. Yeah, I'm technically from Jersey. Okay. But oh. then you, well, why do you, you I don't, this? I don't claim it. You know, oh, okay. I, like I'm from there, but I don't claim Jersey. That's like me in Florida. Yeah. Ooh. Rough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's like My me. Pots, I was, that was the face I made when I was born. <laughs> yeah. That's like me in Jersey. Cause I'm not from there. I don't claim it really. It's a horrible all. place. But the ideology the hey, yeah, you know, that, that I connect with. I don't think, you know, Jordan, I feel like, you know, would you describe yourself as like not claiming Gloucestershire or not claiming Stroud? The, Stroud's short on representatives. I'll stick, I'll stay with it. You know what I mean? It's it like is, being an alma mater of a school of 10. Like, I, yeah, it's <laughs> one of those things them. where, uh, like whenever you describe it, it, it doesn't sound like you don't. Uh, paint a, pr- a beautiful picture you don't we have, a, we have a rich tapestry but then if you were to describe it oh he's from the south of england yeah that's it also is. like it's very I know, it's very picturesque and stuff no it's nice i mean it, it's nice that people are nice it's just i imagine it's just like if you move so far away from your hometown and i like all this stuff it wasn't i prefer mm-hmm. like urban environments right. and i like the sun and <laughs> consistent sun and i hate hills you're like this represents everything i'm not i want to be a city dwelling schmuck because you, know, you get older maybe that matters less like how long were you not in on the east coast um i lived here for two years but then i also lived in like nevada for like a year and what was the timeline of nevada um like 2019 oh, i lived okay. in vegas for like three months and then i lived in reno for six months nice i'm so curious what brought you there um e-dating oh hell yeah it wasn't a vibe Uh, hey (laughs) if someone loves you they won't make you move to reno nevada there we go like let let (laughs) it be known it's not in stone actually it's one of those relationship tests yeah doing the reno test on my boyfriend (laughs) no for real the reno (laughs) test when you move to reno (laughs) yeah i didn't know i could find a place worse than new jersey and then i I lived in reno nevada for six months and then reno said hold my what do they have there i don't know i don't know casinos hold my, yeah, hold my jeff, dunham. jeff dunham is always there oh, i guess he's got like puppet. a residency <laughs> yeah. Yeah. he's lost there's billboards of him everywhere um, when i picture jeff dunham he has the puppet like it doesn't matter where he yeah, oh, yeah. Buffet it line. just fused to his he hand he sleeps yeah. with it yeah, yeah. He goes, and not like a weird way it's just like got a, a small pillow yeah he's there. like a sleeping mask on <laughs> yeah yeah uh, hey, so, are you awake yeah. <laughs> so you came you you moved to la for a couple years and you were like fuck this i was here for two years and then I don't know. I wanted to go be a New Yorker. Right. And yeah. then, and then now this is your, 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 I was gonna say your homecoming, but more like a, you you were here for two years. It was more like a, sh- like a stop coming. I don't even know. There's, what, there's not yeah. a word home for leaving. <laughs> home leaving. Anyway, what's it like being back in LA? I like, I miss it a lot. I oh. may have got too silly and moved a little impulsively, but. <laughs> hey, what that's life. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I wish I could like split myself in half and live in both places. Some people do. I mean, you could make a hair joke there. Like yeah, my myself. old hair. Yeah, yeah, that uh, used to be my thing. Yeah, and and then also on the was it the first Nephilim drop? Yeah, the the two tone hair. 
Yeah. yeah. That's why you were doing it. To- yeah, because I was like really popular when I had that hair. So I just kind of made a character based off of it so I could like use it as like a sauna for I things. I think that's, that's very smart. Yeah, thank you. Wise. What's it like being in the Big Apple now? What's the day to day? Um. Well, I don't know anybody that lives out there because mm. everybody left. My family is like an hour away. Okay. But um, yeah, nobody um lives out there. So I just kind of sit and I work and I hang out with my dog and that's kind of it. You know, that is exactly what moving to LA was like for me for the first two years. Yeah. Mm. Because nobody wanted to hang out with you. I moved right. Yeah. <laughs> that was maybe my first six months here. I moved uh right right before like lockdown like um right at the end of i moved okay end of 2019 yeah from wuhan (laughs) okay hold (laughs) Hold your horses um right i i got like a couple months in of like okay i know people in this town i'm gonna oh i should i have to stay in forever (laughs) Uh oh i have to stay in and order dave's hot chicken and play runescape for two years straight i have to do it i'll do that yeah if you insist now i have to do it still actually is like mine i've just started doing that i don't leave the house as much as i should but before we get into that let's talk about today's sponsor aura Aura is an app that helps you control what private information is shared about you online First name, last name, address, middle names, phone number. Who even knows? There's too much of it. And the reason that there is so much information shared about you online is because there are these little snivelly little data brokers who are selling your information. Not only was my US phone number available and previous US phone numbers available, but also my UK numbers, including a landline number from more than 10 years ago. One of the great things about Aura is that it will automatically identify the data brokers that have stolen your information and give you tips and tricks on how to solve the problem. Aura's app also features VPN, password manager, real-time credit and identity theft monitoring, uh, internet parental controls, protects your devices from malware. That's a lot in one app. Let Aura do the work of keeping you safe online. Head on over to aura.com slash sadboys in order to get a 14 day free trial of Aura. And learn what kind of information is just freely available online. Thanks again to Aura for sponsoring this video. Now back Uh, to the books. For the podcast, that's what we do. What's work for you right now? How's that how's that work? Um, I basically, you know, I usually wake up and then I call I wake up at a crisp one PM. Hell yeah. Um, because my insomnia is terrible. Thank you for making it here. Yeah, I did my best, you know. Um and then, yeah, I call my business partner and we kind of just discuss Nephilim stuff and work on the brand basically you're for like, like an hour or two. I was watching um, just a little update video you did on Instagram and uh, yeah, the like that is like a its own clothing company. You wouldn't describe it. As, I think there's like a difference between like merch. Yeah, it's not merch. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people call it merch, but it's not merch. They mean well. Yeah, because it's wrong. also like... I feel know a lot of like influencers have like a clothing brand is like a side hustle, just a way to generate sure. money. But this right. is like a thing I'm very passionate about. And yeah. actually like I give a shit yeah. and I design everything myself. The clothing so. brand is the first. Yeah. Like piece. it's my yeah. first thing. Yeah. Everything. Which is awesome. Important. Like, and I think that that is like, there are so many different ways to be a creator or to be creative. And sometimes you have to try out different hats, you know, and see like what sticks. Yeah. So do you feel like you found like that thing right now with Nephilim? Yeah, I, it was really weird when I was a child, like the first job I wanted to have was be a fashion designer. And then I didn't consider it actually like a thing, like for the rest of my life, kind Mm -hmm. of. And then I like kind of realized like I had the opportunity to do it because my friend V, who's my business partner, has had his own brand and he's just like run multiple businesses businesses in his life. And he's just he can just do everything. He's right. like, just one of those people. He can, you know, he does photography, graphic design. He's owned all types of shops like he just knows how to do everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then one day I just like called him and I was like, hey, should we just like make a clothing brand? Because I need a job. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, um, and we have I have ideas and I have a vision. Right. I, I already thought like Nephilim was a cool word. Like mm-hmm. I remember hearing it a couple of years ago and I was like, that'd be a sick brand. Right. And I just always had it like in the back of my mind. Yeah. Whatever, yeah. Which it's just, it was always a thing you could do is start the yeah. brand and then what something clicks and you just went, oh, I do, I'll do it. The thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it yeah. happened. Shit. And plus like, I think in life, like you want to find ways to use, you know, the, the stuff that you've accumulated, the experience, the let's you know if you have an audience or something like you want to find a way you know there's got to be a way to make a job work right if if i've got all these things because you you know 
have an audience that you've built from, you know, creating content. And if you decide, hey, maybe I don't want to do that, but I can st still pivot this attention. Yeah. It, and, and the people who are following me probably want to see me really excited about something. And this is something I'm excited about. Yeah, they just want to see me actually do something. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, though. That, yeah. Um, is that the number one priority for the foreseeable? Is there anything, any other plate you'd like to kind of spend? Yeah, basically working on Nephilim and like expanding it. Um, is kind of the thing. I definitely want to get into, are you guys like familiar with like, you know how there's like vinyl, like art toys yeah. kind of a thing? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, it's like, um, basically it's like toys, but they're art, Oh, you know, but they're like for adults. Do, do you, is there like an, a famous one that I may know of? Uh, maybe not by, you know how people have those like Lego looking Mickey Mouse things that oh, rich people will have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of them. They're called Bear Bricks. Okay, yeah. I'm familiar yeah. with Bear Bricks. Yeah. That's like uh, the, probably one of the most popular ones you'd see like around LA and stuff like that. That makes sense. There's this little guy. He's also kind of like Mickey looking adjacent. It's like a little skull dude and they're called cause figures. Okay. Um, if you saw them, you definitely probably like you'd recognize what it was. Right. That makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. And then, yeah. Okay. But I want to really get into like the vinyl toy industry. Those are cool. Yeah. We definitely know a lot of, uh, there's some San Francisco people specifically we both know from work and the past that have them. Oh, that's, yeah. That's in my only reference. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I think Sam has some definitely. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, it could be any Sam. Hey, you don't hey. know. Hey. Just check who we worked with <laughs> from Salt. Yeah. Um, that's kind of sick. Is there like content content you ever want to dabble in again? Uh, I don't know. I've been working on podcast ideas for like, Two years now, but I keep changing things, so it keeps kind Tread of... Tread lightly. Yeah. All right? It's fine. I won't be in your lane. <laughs> it would be fun to just, like, arbitrarily become rivals for yeah. content. Just yeah. start a podcast. We you, isn't even out yet. We just we beef just with anyone idiot. who has a podcast. Hey, hey awesome. <laughs> who are these people with the mic? Who do they think they are? Yes. Who's this guy? Why is he talking about jujitsu and, and <laughs> ivermectin? <laughs> That's our <laughs> That's space. That's Joe Rogan. That's yeah. my stuff. <laughs> Yeah, um, so there's that. I don't know. I go back and forth with the content thing because I'm just like scared and having a lot of attention on me personally freaks me out. But right. then also I want to be successful and like recognized as my own person. Right. But then also I'm scared. <laughs> that I think that's relatable to a lot of people. Yeah. And I think that's valid also because sometimes there is this narrative and I see it a lot with like very big mainstream celebrities where it's like, you asked for this. You, you've you got to take the good with the bad and you're not allowed to complain or feel emotions. Yeah. Because you know? people want to be in the position that you're in. And while I can empathize with like that, like where someone is coming from there, there is just the natural, like everyone goes through the same cycle of human emotions. We have the same like, you know, set of neurotransmitters and sort of ups and downs and cycles and stuff. And you don't want to set a social standard where like, you everyone has the capacity to be permanently happy and if you don't reach that stage you're failing in life like yeah. if you feel bad about something it must be like, oh like i'm not successful enough and that's when you start feeling good and never bad about anything but if you start especially like a new venture you want to do something completely new you can't it's not like transferable happiness and satisfaction like wow i mean like really i'm in great shape that means i'm not sad about my bad relationship you right know? so that is like unrelated no exactly things. Yeah. Yeah. I like also me. like randomly Great went shape. viral one day. So it was kind of like, oh, okay, this is my life now. Yeah. You like quite literally didn't ask to like, <laughs> like, like I a, did what I didn't like. I didn't know it was going to be like that, you know? Right. Cause if you're the guy who, um, uh, it becomes known as the airplane diarrhea man in Barcelona. This is somebody we talked about. Mm -hmm. They had to ground a plane in Barcelona because a dude had explosive diarrhea. That's awesome. And like, Termed as, what was it, like a biological event? <laughs> like yeah, bioweapon like, event? It's like, if I'm going to be famous, sometimes you don't get to choose. You know, yeah. and you could, you could say, you know, like we live in a time where people can become popular simply for having an airplane freak out or like, having a viral photo of them, or there's all those like videos interviewing people who became memes at an early age. Do you guys remember Balloon Boy? Oh my God, <laughs> that yes. Ruled. That was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Because it's nothing. The, the end of the story is just there was a balloon around and then a guy was lying. Yeah. I watched a two hour documentary about <laughs> Balloon Boy and the dad. Because yeah. he was like this like inventor dude and there was all these conspiracies about, you know, because the kid said he, we wanted to do it for a show. And I don't know. I feel like there's still communities that haven't made up their mind about Balloon Boy all these years later. And I think maybe I'm a part of that community. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> maybe he was a balloon or whatever that yeah. was about. 
Welcome back, by the way. How long are you in town? How have you been in town? Uh, I got here Thursday, and then I'm here till Thursday. Hey, yeah. classic Thursday to Thursday. I know. I would stay longer, but I have a dog back home, so I can't leave him. Oh, what you got? What's your dog? He's a French bulldog. His name is Bruno. Oh. Yeah, he's the best. Do you ever put him in a backpack, put him on a plane? I think they have like breathing issues and stuff. Yeah. He's also like slightly too big. So it's like kind of risky and mm-hmm. I'm like way too paranoid. Like yeah. I'm just also like the stress of having a dog in the airport just seems like a lot when you're like traveling alone, especially. But yeah. I wish I love him so much. But if I could bring him, then I would just stay out here you, probably. <laughs> cause I, are you a not loving travel kind of person? Yeah, I hate it. Yeah. I like projectile vomited on the plane on the way here. Hey, you, they could have gone on the plane and then you could have been I know, I could have been that guy. Event. That's what I was thinking. I was Let like, you no, I like Osmo. made it. It was like during takeoff. I don't know what happened. Mm. And then <laughs> was take- you got the wrong yeah, I, got, I got there immediately, yeah. <laughs> you were like, take off, I will. I was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I like got, like I ran to the bathroom and they were like, the seatbelt light is still on. And then I think he was standing right outside, you know, it's like a thin plastic partition. Right. I think he heard me and he was like, okay, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, the he was rules like, go we should let her in there. Oh, Yeah, I don't know. It was kind of, it was kind of sick. I've never like, I've never projectiled like that before. Ooh, I don't know what happened. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't know. It was like early in the morning. Maybe it's because I had to wake up at six a.m. My stomach was. Like, Sometimes you. your body just claim. does something weird and never does it again. Yeah, it was, I'm usually fine. Yeah. You know, I was like, okay. Then I passed out for two hours and played Suica game for the rest of it. Oh, so. hell yeah, I'm That's a cure. Yeah, that was we don't know that. Yeah. No matter what your sickness is. Yeah, <laughs> What's funny is that some people will have that experience and literally make a career out of their Suica game based uh, healthcare plan. Ugh. I should, maybe that should be my calling. You, that's your pip, content pivot. Yeah. The Nephilim Wellness Program yeah. is game out Super on a plane. Game. Yeah. Um, Are you chronically ill? Yeah. <laughs> buy a switch. Yeah, just buy a switch. <laughs> that's all you need. I feel like you have made mental health conversations and talk a, a big part of like your content and stuff. And I, it's always to me seemed very like approachable and relatable. Yeah, when you're crazy, you kind of got to be transparent about it. So, and pe- so like, if I do some weird shit, people are like, oh, okay, she's nuts, you know? They Not just- a lot of people identify with that, though. Yeah, I think that it takes a certain amount of self-awareness. Yeah, I know. Like, I know there's a lot wrong with me, and I knew before the internet. So, it's like, you know, I can't really hide. I mean, I think I do a pretty good job. I don't know. I hide it somewhat well online. So, it's like... You're being insane right now. Yeah, <laughs> I probably... It's crazy. Crazy. so yeah. normal. Yeah. Uh, Start, like, chewing on my hand. <laughs> this is most normal podcast. Uh, I mean, that's it's I, that's interesting way of fr- framing it being like um, like preemptive. Yeah, it's like it's like a warning. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, hey, if I do some weird shit, like you, you know, you're not gonna be like, I never expected this from her. Yeah, she, she. But also, I don't know. I feel like you kind of tell just by like looking at me. But some mm. people, you know, I guess don't. <sighs> it's nice to set that up. Like, uh, no, you're not profiling. Don't worry. You're yeah, no, right like, I'm like actually nuts. Like, this, is, been, like, this has been a, pr- a thing. <laughs> you know, it was a thing before the internet, you know? Well, there's little triangles on the back of a truck. Like, you need to give me extra space if you're going to break. Look yeah, out, exactly. Know? Oh, yeah. I was imagining like the caution, caution <laughs> signs. Yeah, I'm like, hey, you created this, so it's your fault. <laughs> right, you know? right. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, <laughs> that wasn't what I was thinking of. No. You well, made so, me be a truck. Well, no, it's like, I was already crazy. So it's like, you, I mean, you blew me up. So if anything happens, that's on you you know what i mean yeah, true yeah like I, I warned y'all i've been telling y'all since the beginning so right, if i go right. off the rails you know what i mean like shave my head again like they'll know you're it's sneezing like, and coughing and you're like don't get near me yeah I'm, you know, I'm sick. that's it it's like, I warned you. Uh, like if you take the tag off of your your bed there's no more warranty it's like oh. you wanted this <laughs> yeah. you you asked for this that's it and yeah. there it is that's what being insane is it's having a tag yeah you pull it off the warranty goes away you're like ah now i've sick meds rats yep <laughs> sucks um do you mind what's like we can talk about it more specifically what's wrong with me yeah what the fuck is up like do we um, any crossover maybe yeah we guess i don't know how real you want to get i mean we get Wait, which, is which, real, which, which one do we actually start it's really for us it's more about your comfort yeah. level i don't care oh, okay so i'm very like transparently nuts but yeah i'm like i was late diagnosed with like autism like a year ago and oh really I'm, recently okay yeah like when i was like 23 i was like so that was fun <laughs> Yeah, I was like, oh, okay, that explains every social interaction I've had in my entire life ever, and why people would just randomly hate me for being weird my did, whole life. Did you have? Was there like a catalyst for looking into it? I well, I always knew I was a little freak. Mm-hmm. Like I knew there was something wrong with me, and right. I because I've been in like kind of mental health treatment like on and off since I was like fifteen. Mm-hmm. Like I started like therapy around then and stuff, and like I knew I was crazy. Like I was bullied really bad in like mm. middle school and high school. Like I dropped out of high school because I was bullied. 
Um, and again, I in, in hindsight, I'm like, I kind of get it, but also like, <laughs> like I was kind of a freak. I should have put up a warning. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I didn't have the, you know, so I knew something wrong with me, and I kind of got diagnosed with like everything under the sun, and then I was like, okay. There's no way I could have like depression, panic disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, social anxiety, like, and all these other symptoms of other things. I'm like, I feel like there's got to be a way to like condense this into like right. one. Because the, a lot of those things too, like anxiety and depression as two examples, mm -hmm. intertwine so much or like depression and ADHD, like intertwine so much that yeah. like, how could someone really say that like, I, I know it's A, B, C, D, E. Yeah. And they just like... I don't know. My therapist like didn't want me to get diagnosed because she had weird beliefs. Um, oh. And then I'd ask her like I started suspecting it when I was like 18 when I was like working at GameStop. My manager like I was like talking about like my sensory issues with him and he was like, hey, do you have like autism? I'm like, I don't know. And then we're taking like online autism tests like at work because that's right. what you do when you work at GameStop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I was like, oh, maybe. But then like, hey, can I trade this game in for 45 cents? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, autistic, sorry, actually. hang on. I'm <laughs> doing a test. I'm, whack, I'm wrapping up a Quizlet. Oh. Yeah, I just, you know, whatever. Oh, I'm I Lisa. Just, I'm trying know. to figure out which uh, which mentally ill media character I am on BuzzFeed. No, for real. It's like, sorry, I'm just like looking up facts about trains right now. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 can you yeah. wait? Yeah. Can you shut up? I'm reading about Boeing. <laughs> like, actually. Um, yeah, so then I asked my therapist like every half a year and she was like, I can tell you're not. And um, I don't know. Like I went, she has like a power. Yeah. Yeah. Your job is not vibe based. <laughs> That's not what your job is. Yeah, that was it. And then um, just a doctor looking at you, being like. I don't no. reckon. No. That, okay, but like, that no. shit happens. No, you're yeah. a woman. Yeah, that was it. No, that yeah. literally that that what pisses me off. Like it, it's like if you're if you're a woman or any minority. You know, it's like you you get such like uh, they just sniff you. I like I have to, I I feel like I have to have doctors that have some overlap and like background with yeah. me to get like a real. Oh, read. I've had to like throw myself on the floor crying to get like any doctor to listen to me ever, like mental health or just like regular health. Like, and it costs a million like, dollars. Yeah, I've had to like throw like a temper tantrum, and they're like, okay. <laughs> you want to shut up? Yeah, you know, yeah. you're making a scene. A little kid at like a grocery store laying down and going limp. I'm like, oh, yeah. okay, we'll go Just, home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, like actually. No, I mean that. You, I'm sure there's. I mean, I guess your ther your therapist was doubting you. It's a completely different person that the assessment for autism. Yeah, I um, I was on. I kind of had to narrow it down myself because I was on like meds when I was 17. And then I was just like fat and I shaved my head and like, it was a really weird phase in my life. Um, I just kind of went crazy. Like it, the meds didn't work. Mm -hmm. And then um, I tried them again after I like blew up online cause you know, the internet's mean. <laughs> and I was like, maybe I need meds. And then I got back on them. And then I was basically just like suicidal for like two years. Um, the two pretty bad two, two pretty bad years. Yeah. yeah. I'm honestly, I'm amazed I made it through it to be honest. Like it was really dark. Well, I mean, that's amazing. Like, it's also like you, you had all the self-awareness. You like, were trying to get help. I was always trying to figure out like what to do. And right. I think it's insane that they can just like give you drugs without like trying to diagnose you or test you with Agreed. anything first. Yeah. Like I find that absolutely bonkers. Cause the thing was like, because I had autism, putting me in all these like concoction of meds, it, d it doesn't do anything for like autism. You know, it's like, it's whatever. So I kind of narrowed it down. Like I thought I had either BPD or again, like autism. I also, and, um, yeah, I found I was going to give up. I was like seeing a psych. I had seen like multiple psychiatrists. I would try to figure it out. Everybody was like, I don't know. Um, and then like uh, literally by the grace of God, like a fucking TikTok shows up of this girl in California talking about how she got diagnosed. Right. And the doctor who did it like specializes in like women and like non-binary people mm -hmm. like specifically. Right. So I was like, okay, like as like a Hail Mary, let me spend $3,000 because that's how much an autism assessment costs Jesus out of Christ. pocket. And, you know, and I... And I was like, if I'm not, this is going to be really fucked up because I spent $3,000, you know. It's like getting the surgery before you even know that you're ill. Right. No, exactly. Like, oh, whoops. And, um, you know, I saw that it was like two weeks of like testing and like interviewing my family. I had to answer like literally over a thousand questions and like give her my whole life story, which is dark. And uh, yeah, and then she was like, yeah, you're definitely autistic. And it was that. And then I also got diagnosed with ADHD and I have uh, CPTSD. Mm. Did they, yeah. is that had an impact? I mean, I don't know if they, not specifically medication, but like, has that lightened the load 
because it was such a have, relief because it yeah. just it contextualized everything that's kind of yeah. happened to me ever 100 percent. you know i was able to look back at things and like situations i was in and be like oh okay so like that's why that happened that right. way and Forgive stuff like yourself that. for those like yeah because that's all yeah. i ever wanted like my entire life like i knew i was off i knew i was weird everybody made sure to make sure i knew that you know as well <laughs> hey just checking in yeah you're, just, checking you're, in you're a freak and you should die yeah. <laughs> um, I oh like, i was thinking that as well yeah i was like oh my god that's crazy um you know like a reference <laughs> yeah uh so it all just kind of worked out and then yeah but no it was such a relief it, for me it was like something i just needed to know like i couldn't rest until i figured out like what was going on it's i'm so yeah that is something that i think a lot of people relate to like i wasn't diagnosed uh with adhd until or like anxiety depression until six or so years ago now but i'm like i was like a fully functional adult with all these experiences where i felt like i had i was like a pinball that was like or like one of those plinko games where I, I like happened to be like bouncing around into the right situations to like even be a functional adult mm -hmm. and i was like well i'm i'm here and i have the means now to figure out what's going on with me and then the actual progress can start because you have a name and you have like literature and experiences that you can from other people that you can pull on to like learn from i remember my um like one of the small, I talk about this a lot on the podcast, but one of the like niche uh, sort of, I want to say comorbidities, but like one of the like niche sort of side things that is often associated with ADHD is uh, something called rejection sensitive dysphoria. Oh yeah. And that like when I was a kid, it was like, I was always experiencing that where I would just shut down in like certain situations where I'd feel this like intense rejection and my brain would just go like, blank where I couldn't, I would just feel horrible. And like, I wanted to like sort of evaporate from the world and I would just go nonverbal and like sit. And then all my friends would be like, yeah, Jarvis just does that. And yeah. it wasn't even anything serious ever. Yeah. Right. It's like such an overreaction, but you can't, like, and I just thought I was weird. I just thought I was sensitive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, and, and you have to read them as like Emmerisms or Jarvisisms or like, that's just a trait right. I have. And then you get some kind of assessment, diagnosis or otherwise, and then it's like, oh, well, no, I just have all the symptoms of that condition, yeah. not right. the condition or like. Yeah, I was always told I was doing it for attention. Cause oh, that's like a big thing God. with like women too. You know, right. I, I just wanted yeah. attention. Yeah. Cause like, I'd like, especially if I was like parties and stuff as a kid, like little birthday parties, like a lot of times, like I'd get overwhelmed and I'd go like, have to stand in the corner and not talk to anybody and be really quiet, you know, for a bit. And like, I didn't know what that was. Everybody's like, oh, she just wants attention. Dude, you that know? is such a deranged thing. assessment. Like, well, she wants attention, so she is, isolated herself doesn't as want much to as talk to anybody and needs to like just be you know dude this person's not coming to the event because they want attention yeah. from us at the event what? the other thing is like attention seeking is also like a mental illness symptom you mm. know so it's like if someone is like <laughs> yeah. faking symptoms or faking their mental illness they're also probably still they're still mentally ill it's like that's like, not a normal thing to do that, either that's where it comes you know? in it's just like that's just an amorism that's a yeah. thing that arbitrarily happens for no reason Oh, the kind of peanuts makes their throat swell up. Stop yeah. showing off. Yeah, okay. got a grip. It's <laughs> easier than like actually looking into it. The, the like for me, uh, and it sounds like we maybe have this in common, is like the silver lining is the self-awareness to be like, I don't, this doesn't feel right to me. I don't yeah. want this. <laughs> it just is happening and I'm trying to navigate it. So at least like when I am in my, in better sorts, I can seek treatment or i can seek you know answers and try to then give people the the heads up or the warnings and it's like when i'm spiraling with like significant others or friends or whatever i'm just like hey uh this uh it's gonna pass i'm so sorry everything's just really bad yeah. right now <laughs> and yeah you get, you get that do you have that same experience of like because i got the adhd diagnosis but then the one that felt really different was like six months later after starting medication my what i later learned was bipolar too mm -hmm. was my hypermania was so much more frequent and so much more intense because it wasn't being leveled out by you know methods medication whatever worked best and with that one especially that i just had this clarifying moment of getting to like go through the archive of all of my most frustrating or embarrassing or resentful moments and you know see them critically from outside but also forgive myself for some of them yeah good to mm -hmm. say like well, why did I, I feel like I wasted all this time or I, I, I didn't work hard enough at this or I could have made the most of my like degree. I could have been more active at school or, you know, stuff like that. And now 
Oh, I, actually, the big one was uh, I just thought of myself as a angry person and thought of myself as a inconsistent person. Mm. Yeah. It was never like like sometimes lazy, sometimes odd, sometimes too focused, sometimes whatever. And it was always like the feedback I would always always get at work. It was never like you are bad at this. It is you are bad at this forty percent of the time. You are inconsistent. And I'm like, oh yeah, but I don't like those moments. I'm not. I'm like just going home and going to bed. I'm not going home and having a nice night and like, oh, I should have done my work. Oopsie. And now in retrospect, I can go like, oh, that I can mourn that younger version of myself that just didn't know. Yeah. But it, I, I assume that every difficult interaction, day-to-day -day event, routine, work, anything for you now gets to be reframed as like the results of autism or however you want to yeah you know, no, definitely it. results of a cocktail the world wants us to like especially when you're when you're growing up every it, it, we're treated as if everything is a function of our decisions and like uh so you make good decisions you're a good person you make bad decisions you're a bad person if you weird people out at a party you're a weirdo and a freak if you look different then like you've done something wrong even if it's just how you were fucking born yeah and so and it's such a double-edged sword, especially, or not even double-edged sword. It's just a, it just sucks. <laughs> it's like, like bullying. It can just be a so, yeah. it, it can be such, such an extreme, have such an extremely negative effect because it's happening at this vulnerable time where you're trying to like discover yourself and figure out your way through the world. And things are going on that you don't have the vocabulary to explain and people are telling you what you are and then yeah. you're like i guess i'm that then yeah you know how does the term feel i know some people are hesitant to describe themselves as autistic because there's like negative associations with some people yeah you're very candid about it yeah i don't really care i i don't know i think it's also because i've just been also called everything under the sun mm. so like another like labels don't really bother me in that way you know, it's also, it's not a bad word. It isn't a bad thing. You know, it's like, okay, this is just what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this is it. I can't control it. I was Are there strategy? I don't really know. I mean, everybody's experience with autism is so different. So I don't know. But like, after your diagnosis, did you get recommendations of how to mitigate like some of the more difficult? Or is it more like avoiding situations that would be difficult? Yeah. I mean, I kind of like had a grasp on like how to like handle myself at that point. Like you had your own coping strategies. Yeah. Like I definitely got off meds. I don't think, I mean, if meds work for people, I think it's fantastic. I've only ever had miserable experiences with them. Like they've just never done anything for me. So I know I probably won't go down that route again, but I kind of know, like I know, cause I know things that will, what will make me overwhelmed and what won't. I'm always pretty good at like, I think setting my boundaries and stuff at this point in my life. I'd kind of got to that point. That's just through yeah. like, like things I had to experience like and stuff. And yeah. Like, I don't know. I kind of like, you know, became like a bitch is like a defense mechanism thing, but it works, you know? Yeah. So and now I'm just a bitch cause it's fun. Yeah. And also that. <laughs> it's like nice to do. Also that it's fun. And then it's also like, you know, it keeps people like from fucking with you. If you're like scary, <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> It, uh, it helps to be intimidating. Do you feel like, uh, I mean, to be fair, moving around a lot is, I would assume maybe incorrectly is, is maybe difficult. I know like commonly autism presents in some cases as like change is difficult or immediate, like yeah. it's hard to adapt. It was never something that I really feared. Cause like, no matter what, like also another thing in my whole life, I was like, I need to get out of New Jersey. You know, cause that's like where all the fucked up things happen to me. You Sopranos know what I mean? The, yeah, right. that in Nevada. Like I was like, I need to get out of here. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of always like, it's like survivor's instinct. Two places, by the way, where everyone is going to agree with you. You're like, I yeah. had to get out of here. So you're like, I yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, nobody's going to be like, why? Yeah, yeah no, but that's why. <laughs> Just someone who's like, can't find any water in Nevada and is like, yeah. oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, good idea. Yeah, you know, it's 107 also, people degrees. from New Jersey who are mad about this, you're used to it by now. Uh, yeah, you're, go back the, to the you're, you're the person that would have told me to die in middle school so like you know hey i'm not liking these sad boys talking bad about my new jerseys yeah. the water's to differ it over oh man, <laughs> oh, man. the sopranos live in here like las yeah. vegas stresses me out uh, i know that's not what it Nevada was scary is i feel like i was gonna but... get abducted by aliens the whole time right it's like <laughs> it weird it's a, that vibe. It has a... all the bad stuff isn't area 51 there yeah, yeah. So. 
Like I, I thought it was freaky and Reno's the same way where if you if you'd like stand anywhere, you could like 360 like see mountains around you. Right. Oh. It just felt like I was in a hole. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just a creepy ass place. Well, yeah, because Vegas, I mean, my only experience of Nevada is Vegas. I know. Yeah. But yeah. so much of it is just. Also the fact that every single like public bathroom has like sex trafficking signs in it being like, if you're being trafficked to call this number, like, right. Yeah. Like every single spot on the strip. And then also just like even in, like restaurants, I would say in like Summerlin and shit. Right. Which is a good like resource it's right? a good thing to have but it's also it's, terrifying <laughs> exactly but it like creates this fear like you're yeah. like what i at any moment what's it's gonna happen it's a sketchy to ass place just like, every sign just says look out yeah like, whoa why yeah. <laughs> i no just reason. i've never been a gambler i do love a little bit of a gamble like i like a, a pokemon card or i like what do i like I, I love video, a Genshin Impact. A Genshin Impact. <laughs> yeah, you get a cool... Are they, are they called heroes or characters? What are they called in Genshin Impact when you open a guy? I don't, I don't know. I don't even know. I play it and I'm like addicted to it. I don't know. I just say a little, I just say a a little, little guy. You just get a guy. Uh, yeah, when you get a, a rare guy, and and guy, a cute got, guy. I, yeah. I played Genshin Impact like uh, uh, for, I don't know, a dozen hours like three years ago mm -hmm. you get a guy and he's got stars he's got a lot of is he a is it stars that he has i don't know yeah the rarity thing and yeah, you're it's like, like five and four star yeah and you're like oh yeah fuck yeah dude i got i'm actually a better person now that i've no, Sam. <laughs> if i get a like we uh went to uh pokemon go event um this week weekend at the rose bowl Ooh. and it was fire dude so oh oh you don't even want to open sure. this can of worms shout but out to the johnnies by the way if you're very friendly very we nice. have i real stickers. real quick will say uh so we were both at the rose bowl for senator um and a ton of people who are fans of sad boys came up a couple of people came up and said that us talking about pokemon go six months ago <laughs> got them into the game and now they were they had traveled like from across the country to go to this event I haven't received Aww. a penny from nintendo it was like it was like i have so <laughs> yeah jordan uh shout out to the pokemon company international this is not sponsored but hey i'm available <laughs> um <laughs> but uh jordan first number one the yeah so so Pokemon Go is like it was at the it was at the peak of peaks back in you know 2016. Yeah, and then it fell off. But when you have like 200 million people playing the game, the fall off is like there are still tens of millions of active players. Oh yeah, my mom loves it. Yeah, yeah. and so oh yeah, that's really sweet. Yeah, she's always I, on my there. My partner's entire family is now really active in the game. Oh, Aww. Saturday I went around with a uh, shout out Trey, my friend Trey from Texas. Uh, brought his um his mom and dad out and i'm friends with them on pokemon go we were just walking around playing and it was the dream i i was saying this on stream i haven't seen maybe i just don't do anything other than play pokemon go but it's very cool to see an environment like a space where all of these people from like cross generations from like very very young to like you know grandparents uh all sharing in the same experience it's like it's like it's not like we're sharing they're sharing wisdom or anything like that it's mm -hmm. like oh no you've got the pikachu with a hat that i want can we trade like i met a woman from um boston and hey. it, close <laughs> and uh and she wanted uh i wanted armored mewtwo she wanted my uh shiny tropius and we traded catch my drift. she was she was <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> she was so stoked we like hugged afterward oh, it was just cool. like so wholesome that's beautiful and then she was like i hope you have the best time and i'm like i hope you have the best time and we would never cross paths otherwise you know yeah. and i love that like i i it genuinely like brings brings me joy it was a very it was a very sweet day do you yeah, have dude. like a similar type of person if, if somebody comes up to you you can kind of tell in advance like oh this is a nephilimer um yeah, kind of. You know, they have like they always have like a look in their eye. You know what I mean? I do know the look. <laughs> yeah, they always have like the look, and it's like okay. Sometimes you know. it's a look and a little bit of a whisper, and then like a look back. Yeah. And then it, oh, they saw me. Boop, 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 yeah, boop, I've definitely boop. gotten like it's wild when I, I went to Disney with my family last year, and I could like tell when people were like looking at, and I'm like with my family, right. you know, and I'd be like, that guy knows who I am. 
Yeah. You know, and then they'd eventually come up and make their way over, you know. Yeah. And you don't like, want to seem conceited, but you can kind of tell. You can like, because they, I don't know, they stare at you. Right. <laughs> you know? And it's like not a normal Because you'll see them stare. look at you and they'll see them look, talk with their friends and be like that. You know, like you see them do it. I picked up on the mannerism now. I never yeah. used to be able to though, because I also just don't look at people when I'm out. Mm. You know, like I'm very like kind of just, I don't think it's like the New Yorker in me. Like I'm just like, gets where I'm going. Right. You know, I'm just focused on like that. So, but now I'm definitely a lot more like aware of like people like look, because also like, you know, I've always had like colored hair and stuff like that. So people have always just been looking at me my whole life. Right. You know, but now I'm like really aware of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, look at these, it's colored hair pronouns, right yeah, guys? Over here. What's the deal with that? So I could actually go to type five. I'd love to. Oh yeah. oh yeah. You can do that after. I, okay. We'll do, we'll uh, shut off the mics. I mean, we'll do it. We'll keep everything on. <laughs> turn up the game. <laughs> yeah. we'll, turn, we'll turn it up really loud so everyone can hear you. Hey, what's going on with this, this like ladies or something? Well, she got all this metal in her nose. <laughs> yeah, what's, what's that about? Do? Yeah. do you think I could do that? Would I look nice? Uh, <laughs> that's the stash. Should I get one? Yeah, that's what like, they always do. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's what the deal? What the hell is a magnet to your face? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. That sounds bad. It's not magnetic. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not magnetic. They use different alloys for that. <laughs> yeah. Are you are you tempted to come back, LA? Oh my god, I miss it. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Again, like I kind of moved a little impulsively. I don't know. I work so much harder out there. Like I'm way more focused. You know what I mean? When you're in New York. Yeah, when I'm in New York, like because also I have nothing else to do. You know. No, fair enough. Um, and it's so it's like I don't know. I like it. Again, I, I don't know. I have mixed feelings, but I miss everybody. I'm so lonely. And like all my friends are here and I was hanging out with everybody last night and I hung out with some friends like at my homie studio last night and I was like, yeah, it makes me so emotional. I don't yeah. know. I wish I could be in two places at once. Some people do that, but then they have to travel a lot. <sighs> yeah. And again, the thing is the dog. Yeah. If I didn't have like my dog, like, and I love him, I would never, obviously, but, um, or if I could like drive cause I can't drive mm. either. So that's a whole hey, thing. You're in good company. Like, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> We, yeah. We're all late drivers here. Yeah. And Jordan's still so late. I'm not doing it. I'm just like, I'm, I'm nuts. I don't think I should have the ability to go wherever I want, whenever I want. You know what I mean? Like I have this whole like runaway thing, which I think is also why I like to move mm. around, which is partially why I moved and why I like to move around a lot. Cause it's like, I just have a bad day and it's like, where's Emma? Like, I don't like, you know, I just be MIA. It's like, Oh, I drove to Vancouver. Oh, okay. I didn't even know you could fucking do that. You know, how did you get up there? Like, yeah, I, yeah. I would do some weird shit. I think I, you know, like you'd be like, Oh, like I'm in Cancun. How did you get over there? Like, I don't know. I don't <laughs> no. It's you know, scary. I, I want to be. I, I just someone hurt my feelings, and now I'm here. I'm and now married. I'm on, now I'm on the beach. Yeah, yeah. yeah I started a new life. Yeah. I have a five year old somewhere. Yeah. I um, I I hear you, but I also believe that like those experiences help build in your brain like. A response where when certain stimulus happens again, you're like, okay, I want to go away. But then when I do that, I tried it. Instead of mm -hmm. going hypothetically, I don't want to do that because then what would happen? I would be away from my friends who I like. You'd yeah. be like, well, I tried that and I know how I felt. So now I have that experience to like grasp onto, which I think is valuable. Definitely. It's never like moving has never been a thing that like freaked me out. I always like, I'll probably move around like forever, I think. Yeah. You know? I, yeah. Because when I was, you know, f like wrapping up college and everybody was going their separate ways, a lot of people stayed around in the area. Like I went to school in Georgia and which is, you know, <laughs> a step up from Florida at the very least. Uh, and uh, the... Damn, we really take him down to Jersey, destroyed, destroyed. Gloucestershire, pond, yeah. <laughs> Florida, Nevada. <laughs> Forget about it. Nevada, yeah, no, Reno. For real, I wish I could. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but anyway, uh, we had some um, some topics that we wanted to get to today because there's just some stuff happening online, and that's kind of the this is the part of the show where we say. Um, Hey, we had a thumbnail that was not about mental health because nobody clicks on those. Just kidding. We got your ass. Now yeah. we're talking about feelings. We got you. And this is the other things also portion of the show. But also, uh, we want to talk about how maybe we're doomed. <laughs> so, uh, Jordan, you've seen some of the Project Sora stuff. I, I know I you have, haven't. I have seen a little bit of it. You've seen none? Yeah. Okay, mm. so we're going to set this up. Open AI. Uh, largest... Uh, AI company right now. They're the creators of chat GPT. Yeah. 
uh, they recently had some insane corporate drama where they ousted their CEO and then brought him back. It was an insane week. They, it yeah, was like no, a they, success. Uh, it was a whole success uh, season of succession in like a weekend. He came back as an android. He came back as an android. He had a scar on his eye. <laughs> <laughs> he had no a time to explain. Yes, I to say, yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. no time to explain. <laughs> um, we have to make weird looking footage. Uh, yeah, in my time, <laughs> things are different. We have to change. Um, <laughs> Okay, movies so, suck. so yeah, the movies are bad. <laughs> we uh, monitor one off again, by the way. But can, oh yeah, can we pull up some of those videos? So the Project Sora is now instead of they also do Dolly, which is like the image generator, um, okay. AI image generator. They're now doing video. I know, and the video is like, have you seen Will Smith eating spaghetti? No. Okay. Wait. Okay. That sounds this like is a, great. It sounds like a youth I'm just scared. <laughs> yeah. The cats will like take it in for a second. Yeah. That is going to be insane. So they're like, seen? those words shouldn't go together. I'm like, all right. Oh yeah. Here it is. Okay. So this, this is, this is right. We were last year. We around this time we were all looking at AI images. We were talking about the uncanny valley element of them. Yada yada yada. Uh-huh. Uh, Dude, you're making AI, eye contact with us. <laughs> AI okay. video. I'm he like, can't <laughs> hurt you. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. No, he can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he comes down the stairs. Yeah. He's running Will's at me. He's like a fucking <laughs> FNAF animatronic. <laughs> <laughs> Old spaghetti wobbling back and forth like a goatee. <laughs> so, uh, so this video went viral because of the way that it looks. <laughs> um, so let's watch real. That. Okay. <laughs> but this is an important, this is important to know like where we were at last year. <laughs> <laughs> this is a FNAF. Like <laughs> this is very unnerving, but it's like, okay, while it is bad, there are elements of it that are like every individual like square of this video if you just like took a little piece yeah you're like okay that's that's an ear that's like that's a low taper it's it's recognizably will smith yeah yeah the ai said hey you didn't say how smooth it needed to be i technically (laughs) showed you will smith eating spaghetti and now we don't have we don't literally "Mm." have will smith eating spaghetti we do have this video which is ai generated i could see that yeah. Oh, it's Will Smith. With the textures. It's Will Smith eating puppy. <laughs> but yeah, it's like it's things lot, have gotten yeah. a lot better. Is there an update? Because if, if this was on Shutterstock and they were saying it's just puppies playing in the snow, I'd be like, uh, I wouldn't question it, right? Yeah. Is there a, an updated Will Smith eating spaghetti? Will Smith just uh, po- posted on his Instagram and TikTok a video of himself actually yeah, eating spaghetti to make a joke. Get out of here. Uh, but bro. yeah, this is this is another one. It's pretty far uh, off the bed. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. And it's really like, like it's star- if it wasn't for her face. Yeah. Yeah. And the, these are these are a few. Like this is AI generated. And it's like we're getting to the point where this is one year. That's I think that's the craziest thing. Is that this is just one year. Hey. That one's real, by the way. That's no. just a guy on that's it's a guy on AI. A no, I know him. No, we had spaghetti he's, together. He's not real. <laughs> yeah, that's Mark. This one was uh, the prompt was to like generate a movie trailer for like a man, a spaceman who wears a knitted uh, helmet. And it's like. I hate it. It's like, it's like, (laughs) you know, the progress is pretty apparent. It's like until you start to pixel peep and look into it. It's so, uh, so now everybody's like, okay. All right. So next year's the apocalypse or whatever. Oh yeah. This is two dogs podcasting. Oh, that looks good. Sharing the same mic, unprofessional. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that other dog should probably. There's two different mics too. Yeah, two different mics. What brand mics are those? They do look like they're on a green screen. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of them got canceled, unfortunately, for some of the stuff he said because oh, of the woke mob. You know, yeah. yeah. The co- toxic gossip train took down another level. <laughs> Golden Retriever destroyed by the woke mob. So that I think I think it's just like, man. Uh, they're not curious. releasing this to the public right now, nor should they. <laughs> because uh, it'd be Will Smith doing something way worse. Yeah, but because now it's like all the ethicists have to, you know, they, I think there's some sort of th- process they're going through to make sure that there's no way to use this for evil in like the 
obvious ways like uh ai pornography and 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 things like that yeah but people can override that shit easily that's they know the what thing. they're doing like, if they want to do it they're going to get it done well there's going to be people who uh if they're not using exactly this technology there's going to be competitors who don't have the same ethical, yeah who don't care yeah who don't care how do you feel like especially from being a designer and artist point of view no what's your yeah emotional instinct is hate it <laughs> yeah yeah i hate it like yeah i don't no, just no. <laughs> just no. Yeah, <laughs> just no. Yeah, it's just that's generally how I feel. Um, yeah, this this it's is. It's just this there's is... no way to make it without like again stealing from other people. Like exactly. that's it. That's the whole thing. Because it's know? all trained on, and even if it's like licensed or legal, it's yeah. still like hyper derivative, and it's very different for like a a human artist to learn from like tracing the works of other people in practice yeah uh then to train an ai on the works of other people and then create something commercial in their style yeah thus like sort of kind of uh flooding the market with very cheap to produce not like ai art and not, yeah i mean i don't want to gatekeep expression or whatever but there is this like i mean even this this the thread we saw a second ago that guy just posting all the examples it's very telling to me and almost like uh uh the audience that is uh, the biggest advocates for this kind of thing are pretty disrespectful to even the concept of creativity and seem to think that the only thing that is holding them back from making beautiful illustrations is the technical element as opposed to half of artistry being you know your execution yeah practicing literally drawing something or literally ideating on something and then half of it is having an idea and honing it and like rebuilding it. And they're acting as though that first half doesn't matter at all. It's like, make me a movie and it's in space and the guy has a knitted hat. You're like, problem is, I don't have the money to film that. And that's why my great knitted hat movie hasn't been published. Right. Not yeah. because I'm not good at writing or not an interesting person or for some reason I wanted to make a movie about a guy in space with a knitted hat. None of those things matter. It's just... The only reason I don't have a clothing brand is because I don't spend enough time learning to illustrate or I don't have a copy of Photoshop. That's what's getting in my way. It's not, yeah. you know, There nothing is nothing that makes me more irrationally angry online is the, the kind of uh, guys who will be like, here's a thread of I'm an, I'm an expert AI prompt writer and I, I can write the best prompts to make my AI make beautiful images. Um, here's the ways that, uh, you fought, like not like by my course, but basically overselling their skills as a, oh, yeah. as an artist, like they call it like an AI artist. I don't know. It's, there's something about it. This, this is the new, the genre of, uh, smarmy AI bros getting dunked on by real artists. Uh, it hurts, but I had to do it. You know, uh, invincible uh, screen cap, AI art, actual artists, look what they need to mimic a fraction of our power, right? And then, very ironic, you made this post without using your own art. Go to the next slide. It's an animator for Invincible. <laughs> oh, my God. Love that. That's such a weird... The, the that's next funny, one is even better. Oh. Learn how to color properly or learn how to draw to begin with. Not even in your dreams will you be able to make an illustration like this. It's an animator for One Piece. Oh, right. Oh my <laughs> God. God. It's such a weird, like, it, it kind of says a lot where, like, art for those people is, yeah, you have to have drawn it yourself to argue with someone online. That's what, like, art is about. It's about winning. Yeah. A, poning a lose a noob online. Also that, uh, you know, I can't draw for shit. I I think I could illustrate that one piece frame. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's yeah. like, it's just, it's pretty simple. It's also, yeah. Um, it's like, a, it, and on purpose, but it's like a high school sketch. I feel like I could have knocked. I have so much out. respect for, for artists. <laughs> it's just, I saw them post, uh, this artwork of this is my expression. What I want to show, but it's being gatekeeped by the woke left who are afraid to let me <laughs> create art. And it's a sketch, a warped, fucked up looking sketch. That's really unpleasant and poorly done of a anime high school cheerleader beheading a uh, like old style British dragon and <laughs> everything's bad about it. And when somebody asked him like, what is this expert? Like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. He just replied like, it's epic. 
It's an epic win, guys. Dude, that is I an mean, Elon Musk ask reply. Yeah. I'm Do surprised you, it's not his profile picture right now. We will get to <laughs> Yeah, it's an <laughs> NFT style like yeah. hexagon. Elon's work. gonna make a cameo in uh one of the things that we're talking about. Ooh. Uh because I want to move on to what has been captivating my feed, mm-hmm. um, which is the well, how would I describe this? Uh, let's just watch. Let's actually, without spoiling it, let's just do we have the original video? What's a piece of trauma that you have that's funny? It has to actually be funny. I'll go first. My dad abandoned my family when I was five years old. That is um, a wife and four kids. He abandoned us and then pursued amateur breakdancing. And he got really good. <laughs> he like blew up. Like he became like a D-list celebrity status, like viral breakdancer. He became like the oldest actively competing breakdancer in the world. And then he got on Good Morning America and talk shows and Washington Post wrote about him and he went super viral and he did all these interviews and he danced with Paula Abdul. Here, I'll show you. To see, take a look at this 60 year old break dancer. Yes, 60 years old. Amazing. This guy wouldn't pay my medical bills. <laughs> look, I don't, I can't do that at all. It's, it's not quite good enough <laughs> to like leave a family. Like it's like yeah. I wish he did something. My dad just died. Lazy. Yeah. (laughs) I don't consider it. So I I don't even. uh, So maybe. (gasps) Maybe. Maybe. He'd be be, about 60, probably. And he would be white, we think. Yeah, maybe if my dad made it to 60, he would have been able to break down. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, that's when he unlocks like a skill tree. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) He gets like a passive. Doesn't even matter what you choose anything. (laughs) What's up? (laughs) Okay, maybe this is wild. It's better than not doing it. Like it. If I found out my dad did B boy mm-hmm. stuff, or better yet, like uh, I, I I stand staunchly by this statement. I could be wacky, wild, crazy. I think if January sixth happened the way it did, but one person was just doing the sickest fucking karate ever, like kicking the door down. They did it with a bit like a roundhouse kick. That's what the Viking guy thought he was doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, if he was legitimately cool, ten yeah. percent less. Like Nancy animosity. Pelosi's desk lady. Ha! Ah! Yeah, and then they just like, cut it in half. I would. Uh, oh, everyone would go. <laughs> obviously, January six is bad. This one <laughs> part was kind of cool. sick. Yeah. <laughs> this is pretty tight. <laughs> that guy that was carrying the flag. If he was spinning it like a bow staff yeah. the whole time. I don't it's like, know. Okay. Fucking just like piercing the walls. I'd be there the next year. <laughs> so this story, we're going to go somewhere with this. Oh. But uh, how do you think she, Maddie here is presenting this story? It's, I, I would say she's being pretty lighthearted about this it's traumatic experience. It's a very experience. normal TikTok. It's a normal TikTok. She's complimenting the dad. She's, he's, it's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, he it didn't want to pay for my medical bills, but I mean, look at him. Yeah. He shouldn't be able to move like that. She's having a sense of humor about it, right? Yeah. He's That's- dancing for... He paid for his classes. <laughs> That's more than most deadbeat dads do. Yeah. Yeah. Again, yeah, dude, you can be like me. Never give up. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, don't know mine. Kind of low key, maybe a little bit. Uh, doing a few Facebook messages with some people that I met on like DNA websites oh. to kind of maybe figure out maybe just a little bit who maybe my dad possibly is. Just to see. I don't Today's care. Today's the day. Oh, he does. It's oh, Will Smith actually, eating spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> He's spinning on his head. Oh, no. <laughs> he rides in on spaghetti like the Silver Surfer. <laughs> <laughs> like Frozone. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. He, like, has spaghetti, like, come under him. You. Oh, I'd rather you weren't here. Um, okay. Uh, and Jacob, you know Maddie, right? Yeah, I know Maddie. This, Aww. this person? Yeah, she's a wonderful person. She looks familiar. Yeah, so I thought she's that like was a comedian on she's on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, so I thought that was crazy when Jacob was like, Oh yeah, we've hung out. And I was like, Oh, well, there you go. You got a Sadboys connection. Dog horse. But anyway, I what you take away from this is haha, that's hilarious and comes from a bit of sad. It's like a classic comedy thing where it's like, let me take something that pr- is probably rooted in some trauma and let me make it into a funny thing. Yeah. Okay. So he responded. I uh, yeah, I can imagine. Oh, and did he respond? <laughs> the, the phone is spinning around because yeah. it's on his head. Oh my god, look at him. Look <laughs> he at responds. Him. I'm gonna read I'm gonna read oh, wait, 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 wait. don't don't spoil it. Okay. I'm gonna read the um the, his his response for the audio listeners. I wake up at six AM to find that my daughter has posted a TikTok video trashing me. 
She's a big social media influencer with millions of followers. Here it is. Now, can we go to Maddie's TikTok? Like, what? how many followers does she have? Mm. Okay. 72,000 followers is a lot of followers. Don't get me wrong. But this man is presenting it like she's fucking Kylie Jenner. Yeah. <laughs> like, sicking her, si- sicking her fucking- Yeah, millions is crazy. Millions of followers. It is okay to not have millions. You it know is okay I mean? to not have yeah. millions, yeah. but it's also okay to be honest in your in your post. Yeah. And so then he did. Uh, I would say, if you don't want people to talk about it, don't do fucked up things. You know? Valid, like dancing. Yeah, exactly. Don't dance. Cringe. Dancing is for girls. Yeah. Okay, we know that. Oh, that's cute. Damn, yeah. and his username is him and his like new wife. That's crazy. Yeah, I love that. And so I this is that. his video. Now we're, it's long. <laughs> He's so funny looking. <laughs> yeah, it looks like the thumb rules. thumbs you know from Spy he's like, Kids um, wearing a bitcoin shirt I was gonna say he's oh if, that's sick uh, he definitely looks like crypto bro Patrick Stewart he's, crypto from he's from like yeah. crypto bro Professor X high neck crew neck uh, t-shirt under the Dan Flash's style bitcoin shirt shout out to Anastasia for yeah that not joke. even complicated enough of a pattern for Dan Flash's <laughs> but very clear bitcoin logo I I his chair is so low. This is a dad chair. Yeah, he's very it? sunk in. Yeah, yeah. No, you can tell he spends most of his time there. This is where. Well, this is how I want to sink into a chair, though, when I play video games. Oh yeah, dude. and I haven't been able to find a chair where I can sink in. So yeah. uh, we may clown you a little bit, Ben. But if you can hit me up with a chair recommendation, I'll take it all back. A dub's a dub, and he could dance. He could move. He can. He can dance. Oh, Does better than me. Okay, I wake up at six a.m. to do some work. I get my coffee. I sit down, I open my computer, and what am I greeted with? Well, hundreds of comments calling me a deadbeat dad. Anybody else not expect that voice at all? I did not, did not <laughs> expect <laughs> that. Oh goodness, I woke up today and yeah, <laughs> that, that was mackerel. Yeah, I mean, yeah. typically what guys that look like that sound like. That's the rules, yeah. Yeah, it's not too far off. He could be from anywhere, but once he went bald, it like kicked in. Yeah, he was like that <laughs> weird. Perfect haircut for people who <laughs> spin it doesn't need a <laughs> yeah, head or anything. True. Yeah. Just polish that shit. Well, after a few minutes of investigation, I discover that my daughter, Maddie, has made a video. This is the nerdiest commentary video of all time. This is yeah. wild, dude. <laughs> Just Come to find that. out. Actually. I'm <laughs> clapping back today. <laughs> um, my, so I, it's like a Ben Shapiro. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. She tried to read me to filth. <laughs> she tried to pull me online. Um, unfortunately, I was greeted with hundreds of comments. <laughs> dude, Ben, should the timeline with Ben Shapiro just... It was a break dancer. Into break dancer. Oh, so he's dude. so much better. It's not too late. Yeah, I That's feel like true. He's yeah. little, good, in a low, size, low center of gravity. Yeah, Ben, yeah. if you're watching, we know you are. Yeah, I love sad boys. Oh, please. I do them every week. Oh no. <laughs> She's also a big social media influencer with millions of followers. Some of her Lie. videos millions get millions of, of views, and That's this you video can check. has tens of millions of views. 1 million likes, 20,000 comments, 40,000 bookmarks, 30,000 reposts. <laughs> shout out to my um, <laughs> uh, shout out to my screen reader users. This man is going full screen reader mode. This where he's just reading the entire like. Oh, it's 10 fucking minutes? Yeah, we're, yeah. We, I don't think we can watch this whole thing. Okay. But, but also shout out to say, like, <laughs> and this many bookmarks. <laughs> yeah. I, what if the rest of the 10 minutes was him listing other just analytics? Just reading the static, about, yeah. Yeah. 400 yeah. million impressions. <laughs> And her next video had 100,000 views with 67,000 likes. <laughs> and I'm glad and I love her. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Tight. But he is upset. And he is the Debbie Doubt. I thought the TikTok lie was going to be that she, she just made it up entirely and that was just some guy that was on Good Morning. No. So, so in this video, he does not deny what she alleges in the video. <laughs> he, just bl- the- he just blames her for it. Is that what it is? Yeah, she can't yeah. dance. Yeah, like, dude. Yeah. Like, uh, like sorry you weren't born with my six skills. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe if you followed in my footsteps, I would have taken you back in. Yes, yeah, instead of that Hollywood there, bullshit. There are yeah. less impressive things that guys have, like to become a motorcycle guy or something. Yeah. It's like less impressive. When I called my dad and told him I was internet famous, he told me I should join the CIA. Uh, wow, that's the second step to being Yeah, I was like, hey, Dad, I have a million followers. Because I, I kind of had to, like, let him know. Yeah. You know, that, like, hey, this is a thing now, so you have to, like, be aware. Because, <laughs> um, you know, people are probably going to try to find you now. Because that's, like, life. And he's like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I have, like, a million followers, you know, on the internet now. He's like, okay. You know, the CIA is hiring. 
I'm like, okay. Is he in the CIA? No. <laughs> Sounds like a knock. Yeah. He wished he was, but no. <laughs> That's a certain generation of guy as well. Yeah. Like a certain t- it's no, he like- was very like, he really, like if you talked to him, you would have thought like he was like in the war. And I think he just really, <laughs> like he just fantasized about it like Is all the time. very Jersey? Kind of. Oh, he just- I'm in the war. Yeah, he just kind of. That's not, yeah, that's his jersey. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I don't know. We just had like random like military shit like all over the basement oh, and like cool. weird like propaganda. It was like oh, very yeah. concerning. Oh, that, that's like super. Reddit it was guys. like baseball and like the army it was like his hyperfixation. <laughs> I wonder which parent I inherited the autism from. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was it was. Uh, but yeah, if you talked to him, you would have thought like he was like overseas, like on the front lines. But he. Uh, <laughs> He was just uh, he was an attorney. They're one of those CIA <laughs> That's like guys stolen that... valor. It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's like hey, you can't have that. It was like one step away. He'd yeah. also do this thing, you know, like um, this is so off topic. I'm just talking about weird no, dad no, things. No, 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 yeah. no, please. You know, there's a thing for like um, baseball fans. There's this thing called Yankee Fantasy Camp where you can go role play as a Yankee and go to like spring training as a and stuff. Yeah. Oh. And you no. get like a little uniform and everything. As and, like, an the, adult. Yeah. As no. an adult. I saw recently uh, there was a. I think it was maybe NBA All-Star Weekend or something. It was some basketball, some norm like NBA court, but it was like a bunch of rich businessmen could rent rented it out to play their like rec league game or something. This is LARPing. I mean, this yeah. is yeah, just it LARPing. Is, this is LARPing. It's LARPing. And I'm like, foam swords, yeah. the it's whole like, deal. I would do that too if I could, I guess. Yeah. But it's just so funny to see the like um, Morgan Stanley executives or whatever. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, One of those guys buys, buys like a to scale X-Wing and like, he's like, no, it's memorabilia. It's going to be worth something. I'm like, you can just like Star Wars, man. That's yeah, okay. You're That's allowed. Fine. Yeah. You're going to get in trouble. Dude. Yeah. Oh my God. Doing it. Because all these signed baseballs, but from like nobody valuable, like they were worth nothing. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't even know where they ended up. Yankee camp. Yankee fantasy camp. You yeah. can't call it camp when you're over 18. It no. stops being camp. It's yeah. like a No, he had to be like well into his 30s and 40s while he was doing this. I, okay, counterpoint to all of this. Maybe I would maybe just a little bit like to go to a camp as an adult. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. But it's that's man. hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that you could go to army camp as well. Can you enlist in the army when you're like older? I, I 100% can. I don't can. know if there's like, is there, what's the cutoff? I don't know. But it's yeah. my plan, actually. Yeah, it's kind the of The American yeah. military. Oh, hell yeah. I'm going to become a Navy SEAL. That'd mm. be cool. Which is a rumor I tried to start like a year ago. It's a lot of work. Oh, come on. It's uh, no, it's like it's like getting a driving test where you, there's, it's like more lenient once you're over like 25. Oh, whatever. yeah, they're just like, we'll take you. Did you have a hyper focused type thing where you would go to a camp for it? No, never. I, no, well, you said that like fashion design was the first thing you wanted to do. Yeah, I was like a five year old, it wasn't like a super long thing. I wanted to be a fashion designer or I wanted to be a goth rock star. That's I put that on my student of the week poster when I was five and then my favorite color was black and they had to be like, hey, she's five and in Catholic school, <laughs> what the hell is this about? I mean, we, I feel like we that's have to brand. fix her with powers. Yeah. yeah. And then I still ended up goth. So I don't know. But that's cool because you like it's like cool to find yourself and then be like, I was right. Yeah, I was at least like, you know, it's, you know, I find a lot of comfort that child me if they saw me right now, they'd be like, oh, hell yeah. Like I did everything that child me wanted me to do and oh, become. Oh, same, yeah. yeah. That's nice. Like they wanted me to be, I wanted to be like an internet famous little emo bitch and it kind of worked out that way. <laughs> my, so. I wanted to be in Nevada. I wanted to. Yeah, I wanted to be in Nevada. <laughs> my, uh, one of my yearbooks that I have over there has someone who signed it that says, I'm sure I'll see you on YouTube someday. Aww. And I was like, what did you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, cause I, That's I, crazy. Yeah, it was weird. Oh, and they also said uh, doing something related to High School Musical. Also a thing they said. Oh. Yeah, it was very on point. They, uh, they shout, out to Helen. Open, though, shout out to Helen. She, uh, I think she finished her PhD in history at Berkeley. Uh, and maybe she also has a PhD in the future. Dude, they might have implemented it now. Cause we should see what else she could predict. I know. Literally. You know what else do you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She has reverse history. Yeah. She's, yeah. I, did, I finished my PhD in the future. Um, who was coming back with the, the scar and the cybernetic guy? Oh, Patrick's <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I can't even remember. It's all blending together. Something, the yeah, dad. I was going to say. I was going to try to call back to that, but I couldn't remember the details. What's the dad's, uh, posi- like, what's his counter? Just it's mean. Don't say that. Don't call me a... Yeah, let's beat. watch a little bit more. Do we, if we jump ahead. Or watch this video. And frankly, I was pretty chagrined by what I heard. 
This guy rules. <laughs> this guy talks like a Simpsons character. <laughs> he like talks like a fake white guy. He talks like yeah. Dave, Dave Chappelle's impression of a white guy circa 2000. Do you think he's like putting it on like a camera voice? Like, do you think, like, you know how like pe- like normal people, like they're not used to be on camera, so they start acting all weird? Right. Oh. You know? You think, I was you chagrined think by what I heard. Talks? I mean, he's got a do fake AVE sometimes at some point in his B-boy career. Oh, he's, oh, da- he's yeah. dapped somebody up oh, and yeah. he's definitely said my soul brother. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he definitely said that. What's tracking, brother cousin? Yeah. The same brother man. Least. But honestly, the more I watch this video, the more I like it. Well, I like about 98% of it. However, I do need to correct a few statements in the video. I would like to correct, like he's already off on the wrong foot by like this millions of followers shit. Where it's like, where it's like, it seems small, but I can, I can already tell the like hyperbole or like the sort of have truths that are going to come out. Like, and she wasn't even, she didn't give like a lot of detail. She wasn't like, she wasn't like, fuck my dad or anything. No, she literally said, don't, she said, I'm I'm amazed. She said, I, I, you know, this and I don't want to weird. put any of her yeah. and he is. stuff on blast. Like it, it, it doesn't matter who you yeah, are. She wasn't this... making fun of him. She wasn't saying he sucked. She was saying, look, he's sick. She said, be yeah. nice to him. Like, yeah. yeah. He's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and she said, he should be able to dance like that. This is crazy. <laughs> That's such a funny one. <laughs> I'm imagining a world where he didn't leave, but he's like, uh, everyone thinks he's cheating on his wife. He's like, oh yeah, I've got another conference. I have to leave town. Like, where, what do you do? Who are you what meeting you up doing? with? That's and a they, movie, by they the way. walk into the hotel. He's spinning on his own. Yeah. <laughs> and he gets up. He takes a deep breath after after like, oh, like a release. Yeah, he's got like a. <laughs> he got it out. I'm, I'm glad he's I got, got like caught. a Don yeah. King esque trainer where they're like, keep <laughs> yeah. spinning. You can do Don't it. Stop spinning. They're like slapping him. <laughs> um. All right. Let's see. First, let's just watch Maddie's 90 second video, no. and then I'll give you my comments. What's a piece of? Okay, we can skip past that. Cool bill. This right here is Aww. a wholesome video. That's beautiful. This is what he should have released. He should have released him smiling yeah. and going, aw. And then maybe maybe a little maybe bit. Maybe I of, should call my kid. Maybe I should yeah. call my kid. Pay your medical no. bills maybe yeah. a little bit. Or apologize for that. I mean, yeah. you do whatever. I don't know what the bag is you get from B-boying. It's probably not spectacular. But. He's on his that is a nice shirt. His B-boy name because his name is Ben Hart. You know, I'll get texts like this. Happy birthday, question mark. And then like links to his to his breakdancing video. That's true. Like, you have funny trauma, like actual <laughs> funny haha. Legend. Oh my God, that's so I good. like him. Okay, in many ways, I love this video. And of course, I love my daughter, Maddie. Aww. And we get along great. At least I think we do. But a few corrections are in order. This gives me the vibe of like a Bill Nye the Science Guy cadence. Yeah. Here's why I left my family. You'd be surprised. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> and I love and I'll my show daughter. you why. <laughs> I miss my son. <laughs> that need to be put in context. First, I can see that as a five-year-old, Maddie would see her dad as having abandoned the family. One day I was living there. The next day, I wasn't. And that will look like mm-hmm. abandonment to a child. But married couples do get divorced about half the time in America. And I was just living a mile or so down the street in LaGrange, Illinois. We just weren't living under the same roof. Now, about not paying medical bills, that's just not correct. Here was the financial arrangement of the divorce. Maddie's mom, my ex-wife, got $2 million at the get-go, out of the gate, a lump sum payment. Plus, I was paying her $18,000 per month in child support and alimony. This was later reduced to $12,000 per month. And of course, I paid health insurance and out-of-pocket medical costs. I also put six hundred thousand dollars into the kids' college fund. How In all, I paid have? out about five what million dollars. There's something to my missing ex. here. This is it, 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 you just dropped. Yeah, there was. I paid the medical bills. I yeah. bought the hospital. <laughs> yeah. uh, huh? What, what happened? That's yeah. the Bitcoin. That was crazy. I, one of the things yeah. he's missing here is that, like, uh, well, the, there's a lot of stuff he's saying that's disputed. Uh, like, I don't know the truth, but the um, the stuff that he did was like allegedly court ordered and not like stuff that he was doing out of the yeah, kindness kind of, of his sorry, heart. Yeah. Uh, but paying it, child support is a preordained like situation, right? Cause it's like if, required. You can't get out of it. Yeah. If it's not required, then that's just t- giving someone money. Yeah. <laughs> if, <laughs> it's not called child support. And, it, and if your five-year-old kid 
if you're a mile away from your five-year-old kid and you don't see your five-year-old kid, then what is the difference from being five, one mile away versus a thousand miles? You can away? live in the same house if you never see him. Yeah, <laughs> if you're dodging around. Like, yeah, because yeah, like, if 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 my child thought I abandoned them, I would maybe call them and have a conversation if that was what I didn't intend to happen. Maybe, maybe they should have driven over to see me. Validate their feelings, try to understand their perspective. But he, I, I feel like he's like, um, actually, while I'm technically correct, he, thank you, sir, for your, here's a Reddit gold type response. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Poning my daughter's claim that I abandoned her when actually it was only by a mile. I'm now a little bit sucked in and I do want to watch more of this, but for the podcast, we definitely have to cut some of it out. <laughs> wife to cover costs for her and the kids and this is in 2005 dollars so add 50 percent to account for inflation okay. in other words i was not a deadbeat dad at all and this by the way Maggie did not video. see that in her video but a lot of the comments assume that and say that why don't men get lip filler <laughs> that is, it, he do, he, yeah he looks like will I smith just, eating spaghetti i think we need to normalize like lip filler for men yeah at you least know. like accentuate it with something or other yeah maybe put, do like an outreach yeah program. like put on some aquaphor <laughs> at least <laughs> help me yeah i'm, I'm not gonna A speak plumper. on that i've been I'm, i've been blessed with the plumpies <laughs> not me that's <laughs> inject this shit hey now of and course there was no yeah. way for maddie to know how much i was paying because she was a kid this wasn't something i <laughs> talked about also, remember that I was living one mile down the road from the kids in LaGrange, Illinois. Sidewalks all the way. An easy walk or bike ride. The reason you're saying it. Yeah. So walk over uh, yeah, and see your kid. He's like, no, <laughs> my, your five-year-old should walk over to me. My kid should bike to me. <laughs> yeah. My kid should commute to her yeah, father. My kid wants to see me so bad. They Put should make the, the effort. Yeah. yeah. Did you, could you afford to bike it like five for a mile? <laughs> that seems illegal, yeah. right? Unsupervised. By a road. <laughs> I would assume something like I would be like, there's got I hope someone's watching that child. Yeah, dude. And probably with turns. <laughs> it's not like a mile <laughs> direct. Yeah, straight down the road. <laughs> Can't see him. Fine. No abandonment, just a divorce. Was I at fault in the divorce? Yeah, I would say it was about 70% at fault. I own that. Maddie's mom and I were really not compatible in many ways. We were compatible in some ways, but not in other ways. <laughs> Do I regret marrying Maddie's mom? No, absolutely not. I was not. going to say yes. It'd be if so I funny. If you <laughs> yeah, I could have been a b-boy much younger. Would yeah. not have been born. They would not have existed. The kids have turned out great. <laughs> I know he's saying they would not have existed because they wouldn't have been originally born. But he sounds like he's going to murder them. Yeah. <laughs> like, they wouldn't he, have lasted. He's talking like Thanos talks about <laughs> like what he has to do. Yeah. It's like that most critical clip where he pulls out the gun. <laughs> <laughs> These are they Max. Would not have existed. <laughs> Watch my clips. <laughs> What's up, guys? Going on, guys, I would destroy my kids. There's a lot of viral videos going around about how I'm a deadbeat dad. I would take my fingers and erase them from existence. I'm an excellent b-boy. <laughs> Charlie should yeah. Charlie should pivot. Especially yeah. with the long hair, I feel like that would create a cool spinning top effect. Whoa. No, for real. He's like his rival. The cuts on this are so funny to me. I like I, that he edited it, though. Yeah, oh. it's just like... Uh, yeah, it is still 10 minutes yeah, he's long. He's got that iMovie. As a video <laughs> editor myself... Every time he goes, and I definitely didn't abandon my children. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie has become very successful. <laughs> Do I regret my wife? No, of course yeah. not. We were two very different people. Yeah, it looks like he's having like an A B with himself. <laughs> yeah, he's doing he's doing Did I abandon he's doing like old school YouTube jump no, cuts. Exactly. <laughs> he's marbles. Yeah. yeah, yeah, literally. Yeah. Um. So then they said this, and what the heck? What the hell's going on here? Oh my god! All those little dude. sketches. Did you, have you guys ever seen that video? Of, I think I've shown it to you that Johnny Depp and Amber Heard apologizing because they tried to get their dogs oh, yeah. in Australia. All right, I gotta know more about Ben Hart, man. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. But ben Hart, man. Ben Hart, man. I gotta know more about Ben Hart, Close. man. One other slight correction, which I hesitate to even bring up, because I love the way Maddie did this in her video. I did not abandon the family for break dancing. <laughs> I have a career. I'm in the advertising business. Built an ad agency. That's how I was able to afford to pay Maddie's mom five million dollars. Hey, sorry, guys. Maddie's mom and I. I left you to do advertising. Yeah. I'm not like a bad guy. Yeah. I saw Mad Men and I'm like, epic bacon. That'll be me. Actually. That'll be me. <laughs> I miss the 50s. He does feel like he thinks that he's in Mad Men. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know? I mean, Bitcoin guys are that. That is the contemporary. Yeah. But it, they post, you know, images of like Andrew Tate smoking a cigar, 
uh, mm-hmm. Don Draper, and it's like this. These are what men were just miserable people. I do that love traumatized that, like, from war. The dudes that will wear like a very loud piece of like clothing, like a statement piece, but like have no like swag to it at all. <laughs> so it's just yeah. like an extremely strange. Like it's a Dan Flash's shirt, and then like you know, like dad dad jeans and like those uh those like big white Reeboks or whatever. <laughs> yeah, sat in his truck. It'd be better if he was a truck dad that also did do people. I wonder what kind of car he drives. Uh, he's driven around like in succession. I separated in 2004 and divorced in 2005. I took up breakdancing entirely by accident in 2012 as a way to get in shape at the age of 54. By accident? By accident? <laughs> <laughs> he kept falling yeah. over and spitting on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> I slipped in some of that. That's a perfect pop lock. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> if you might be wondering, can he still break dance at age 66? Well, I don't know. Let's see. I'll give it a try. Shut the fuck up. Okay, man. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, hell no. That's a Bitcoin flag. Oh. What the fuck? Next to the American flag. Oh, this rocks. And the rest of the video is this. <laughs> Stop, you're kidding it me. Is, I am not. Jacob, skip forward three minutes. <laughs> that is awesome. That's awesome. Oh my God. What a legend. Is, that it's never too late to start breakdancing. I started when I was age 54. No, that's not the point oh, no. of the video. <laughs> that's a beautiful so message. Really no excuse for anyone not to be breakdancing. <laughs> Guys, I know what we have to do after this. Yeah, they're I know what we're spending the we rest of our day. Upside down. Yes. Yeah. No. We're, at, we're ending the podcast <laughs> on the Patreon. <laughs> yeah. Our Bitcoin flag. We unfurl it. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking deranged. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no reason not to get in shape. Specifically, <laughs> stop being. <laughs> what the fuck? How long was he dancing? He, I think like two or three minutes. That's crazy. That's incredible. Oh my god. Oh, I love that. Just plain Aphex twin and people are dancing for four minutes after telling your daughter she's actually fine. Yeah. Um, actually, I didn't abandon you. I just left. Yeah, you, you all turned out fine, so what's the problem? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, a deadbeat dad wouldn't get divorced. Idiot. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Check this shit out. Oh, fuck, Aww. dude. That is kind of a Bitcoin mindset. Like, uh, those guys on Twitter where if you're, like, mean to them or something, they're just like, um, I actually have $200 million in Ethereum, so who's the loser now? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, you think I abandoned you? Check this out. Will wins for five minutes. Know, there's something. So I, I obviously would love to have unbridled riches. Mm-hmm. But there is something utterly ruthless about the people who have hundreds of <laughs> millions of Bitcoin dollars. Yeah. Dude. It's so straight. It's so weird. He should have, like, I mean, I guess the dance, it's better than like most of them, but I feel like there's a wealth level where you got to get a boat, right? Come on. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, I mean, maybe he's on he, a boat. He spends right it on something. Yeah. Maybe yeah, he's B boy dancing on a canal boat. <laughs> no, I'm right. I love this guy. I hate to, sorry, Jacob, to your friend. I, you know, I apologize that they had to go, you know, feel yeah. abandoned, feel unsupported. But at the same time, where's the Bitcoin shirt? I know. It's going to get worse. So, Can we get uh, that what shirt? she stays in the will. Ooh. Mm, true. Gets his uh, baseball hat. He gets his, wish, yeah. <laughs> well, gets no. his flag. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Bitcoin. Where does this go from here, Jacob? Have you watched this? Uh, no, I didn't stay around to watch this. I yeah, no, I valid. Was- yeah, you're you're totally real mm-hmm. for that. There's not. Did you re, didn't reply to reply? Oh yeah, so she replied. Oh, do do we yeah. have that? I'm recording a quick response to all this. I'll probably delete this in the morning because like I don't she actually have like bad will. They like, never actually do because it's a very <laughs> story. It's very silly. Um, I like to laugh at my trauma instead of like being super sad about it. But I know my dad posted like a 10 minute video or whatever, being like. You know, my daughter's lying. We have a great relationship. I have a great relationship with all my kids. That's just objectively not true. Like, guys, we're all freaking out about this in my family group chat right now. We're being like, he's so unhinged and delusional. We don't know if he actually believes his own narrative or if he's lying on purpose, but he's just like a weird guy. Yeah, he said he lived down the street from us. That's not true. Or like, if he did, it was only for a few months, maybe. But actually, for most of my childhood, he lived in Florida with 
his new wife like basically like i don't want to get into this like again like my video was basically like sanitizing the situation and like poking yeah. fun at the lightest parts of that childhood trauma but obviously in real life it was a lot more like complicated and traumatic and it was really hard he left us immediately married another woman we didn't hear from him for years and then he would visit every few months and we'd go out to dinner but like he truly had no hand in raising us at all. We don't speak with any sort of regularity. He doesn't know when my birthday is. Like, as you guys saw in the video I posted, he got it wrong. He gave us some money growing up. I Like, I honestly don't know the nitty gritty of the financial situation. I, I really, really don't. But I do know that several times I've asked him for financial help with medical expenses, like, especially, like, in college. And he wouldn't help me. So that's what I was referring to in my video when I was, like, he wouldn't pay some of my medical bills. I'll probably delete this in the morning, but I'm, you know, two hard kombuchas in. And so I feel the need to kind of defend me and my family's like pov bottom line is this guy was a completely absent father completely absent father i don't he's like my i was just a bike ride away from those kids and it's like not once did any of us ever ever take a bike ride to his house i don't think <laughs> i've ever been in his house ever so this whole thing is so bizarre like i'm so surprised that he responded to my video because i'm just like damn i could have actually made you seem like way worse than i made you seem like in my video i just made you seem like such a whimsical funny guy like but in real life, it was actually a lot darker. So I'm so surprised that he responded to it. Yeah. And it's obviously kind of hurtful and weird. But again, we Aww. don't really have a relationship. So at the end of the day, it doesn't have a huge effect on me. It's just kind of a bummer for my family. And we're all kind of looking at this and looking at his response. And we're just like, this is crazy. If this is actually his narrative, it's like delusional. It's very weird to imagine you're like having a dad that is that guy those those guys online like the bitcoin grifter types yeah that are so like internet pilled but like he's 66 years old you can't maintain this you can't be like saying i'm a huge fan colon three you you are late epic bacon <laughs> yeah. i love Ooh, you uh, and then <laughs> doge to the moon and then the kid uh. says you abandoned me and he goes um no Actually, I was actually, been, actually, I was but a mere cross country bike right away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was just a matter of states. I texted away. you happy birthday. It might not have been the right day, but <laughs> that's the thought, tried. That's the thought yeah. that counts. Yeah. Okay, Come on. the name was wrong. The birthday was wrong. It's like what? How many things? I gave you money. What? I'm a financial yeah. ad executive. What more do you want <laughs> from me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not, you're never too old to stop. And also a Bitcoin it. explainer. Oh. oh, I do the tiny. Oh, what is his collage? What is, oh, what is, there, is that his new wife? That's his new wife. Oh. I feel like I shouldn't be in. I shouldn't be like looking into this man's. But he's Wait. kind of. He's kind of. Is this guy a fucking like CIA spook? It's a photo of him talking to Nixon, then Reagan, then I think that's Bush Senior. That's Bush Senior. Yeah. His wife. <laughs> All right. Wait, is there anything further? And, 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 and Michael Strahan. <laughs> the only <laughs> other man in this photo is Michael Strahan. Was that is and that's his wife presumably on the I, yeah. I guess. Oh. There's a boat. He's got one. Okay, I'm in the wrong. Yeah. It's never too late to stop break dancing. Uh wow. Wow, kinda cool actually. Okay. <laughs> oh wait, there's a video. He's wearing a people jacket again. And another Fucking yeah. Um Okay. Wow. But the damage he's done to the B Boy community, which we're all a part of, of course. Yes. I spin around <laughs> that's that's true. True. we are sleep on my head. Um, <laughs> my was there another TikTok lying thing? So while this was a situation where someone was alleged to be lying on TikTok, there are some more objectively obvious people who have lied on TikTok and something I've talked about in videos before. And something we will be talking about on our Episode of Sad Boys Nights nice. with Emma on patreon.com slash sad boys. Nights, I'm sleeping. Emma, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Is there anything you want to promote other than Nephilim.co? No, please buy my clothes. I need a real job. Thank you so much. <laughs> you want to buy these clothes so you can go back to GameStop and get back in that car. Yeah. You know, if it paid adequately, I probably would still work there. GameStop, I do like a GameStop. If it would like cover my rent at the least, like I would do it. It's sad that stores like that are going away. Yeah. I don't know. There's, well, you know, with all the stock stuff, it kind of had a oh, resurgence. Oh, right. True. I think, it, I think it, was, it would have been on its way out had it not become like a stock meme. You know this guy invested in GameStop. Oh, thanks, man. You know Kept he Kept us afloat. I had to work there throughout the pandemic. I was internet famous and working at GameStop at the same time during COVID. That sounds like hell. It was really, it was awkward as hell. Because <laughs> that was also my demographic. Right. And they'd be like, are, are you? And I'm like, don't tell people where I work, please. Oh, <laughs> you God. Know? Oh, like, please. oh, my God. Don't tell people I live here. 
Um, uh, all right. Well, Emma, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks we for having. We end every episode of Sad Boys with a particular phrase: "We, we love, love you. you, and we're sorry." Boom. I was the Super Bowl streaker at the game last night, and I just got let out of jail this morning, and a lot of people are asking- Look, I don't know what literally is happening with the streaker, like what the legal position he's in or whatever. That man is not spending one night in jail. The Super Bowl commission is probably going to have him killed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just publicly executed. <laughs> drawn and quartered. Yeah, it's going to be projected on the sphere. Just <laughs> 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 gallows, yeah. Gucci girl, Gucci girl, how you doing, how you moving, girl? Moving on, how's your day looking? That future girl, future girl, yeah, we on now. Take my money, go away, all you want it. Guys are rich for me.